following broadcast is brought to you by the American Tobacco Company, makers of Lucky Strike and Dual Filter Territon cigarettes. And by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, brewers of Budweiser, Michelob, and Bush Bavarian. <laughs> The St. Louis Cardinals are on the air. Time for St. Louis Cardinals baseball. Brought to you by Lucky Strike Cigarettes. Get with the taste of fine tobacco. Get lucky. The taste to start with. The taste to stay with. And by... Premium brewed Bush Bavarian beer. Bush Bavarian drinks good, unusually good, with more taste, more heartiness, more satisfaction. Now let's follow the Redbirds. Now the lineups for this, the first game of the four-game series with the Giants for the visiting San Franciscans, leading the league by a half game over the Dodgers. Chuck Hiller at second base leading off. Willie Mays in center field. Willie McCovey in right field. Orlando Cepeda at first base batting fourth. Philippe Ballou is in left field. Jim Davenport at third base. Jose Pagan is at short. Tom Holler, the catcher. And Juan Marichal, 8 in 3, is on the mound for San Francisco. For the Cardinals, Kurt Flood, who had three hits last night in center field, leading off. Javier is at second base, sitting in the number two spot. Bill White at first base. Stan Musial in left field, batting four. Ken Boyer is at third base. Carl Sawatsky is back of the plate. Julio Gotai is at shortstop. Doug Clemens is playing right field. And Bob Gibson, who is 1 6 and lost four, is on the mound for the Cardinals. Marischal has already defeated the Cardinals by in two games and lost to them in neither of his outings. Gibson is 1 1 against the Giants. There go the Cardinals on the field and here for the play by play of the ball game. And his good evening to you is Harry Carey. Thank you, Jack. Hello again, everybody. All set to play baseball here. The rains have blown away. They certainly cut into our, our attendance. It rained all afternoon, and boy, I mean some rain. Here is Chuck Hiller, the second baseman, hitting 281 from McHenry, Illinois. No homers and 20 runs batted in. First pitch by Bob Gibson is high and outside. One ball, no strike. Group of uh, some 60 from Belleville, Illinois. Out here honoring Red Shandies tonight. Here's the pitch to Hiller and to strike off. Red is a stockholder in a bowling alley, and most of the employees of the bowling alley are here. One ball and one strike. The pitch to Hiller. Lined in the center. Flood goes back. He's there waiting. Makes the catch. Killer line to flood in center field. And that's one man away. Here's Willie Mays hitting second. <laughs> Willie McCovey will be next. Then Orlando Cepeda. Then Philippe Alou. Then Jimmy Davenport. Boy, you've got to get good pitching to beat these fellas. Here's the first pitch now to Mays, and it's outside. One ball to no strike. One man out. The ball game in the first. There's the pitch, and he swung and missed, and the count is in. Mays with 19 homers, 49 runs batted in. Straddles the plate wide. Bob Gibson gets set. Here's the pitch. Curveball, duck out of the way. <laughs> Willie May. 
one of the great stars of baseball. Willie now, 31 years old. Here's the pitch. A little bit low. All three. Gibson really pumping that ball hard. He's had Mays giving ground up the plate. But now he's down to three balls and a strike. Here it is. High pop foul back and out of play. The full count. Three balls, two strikes. Bush Bavarian Beer, your host, along with dual filter tarot and cigarettes. Three balls, two strikes. Now the line, here's a pitch to Willie Mays. Fouled back again. It's pretty tough to earn a living at that plate right at this moment, Harry. It's a little difficult to see, not quite dark. They didn't take batting practice, and Gibson is firing. He is really throwing hard as right, Jack. Here's the windup, the 3 2 pitch. Struck him out on a curve. Mays gave up on the pitch, thought it was inside. It broke sharply right over the middle for a call third strike. Here now is Willie McCovey. Too big to be a man and not quite big enough to be a horse. I bet Mays is thinking about stealing second, Harry. Till that ball snapped across the plate. Willie McCovey hitting 315. Seven homers and 14 runs batted in. First pitch is low. One ball, no strikes. Redbirds have won the last three in a row. A big series for the Cardinals. We need a good series here. Here's the pitch on the way. Fastball outside. Two balls, no strike. McCovey, born in Mobile, Alabama. His hobby is reading comic books and seeing motion pictures. And hitting. Yeah. There's the pitch on the way. Ooh, what a cut he had at a low fastball. And it is two balls and a strike. National League Rookie of the Year in 1959. McCovey, 24 years old. 6-4, here's the pitch on the way. Swings, and he misses strike two, he had a cut. And that evens it up at two balls, two strikes. Bob Gibson, shooting for his seventh victory of the year. Now the wind up the 2-2 delivery to McCovey. Ooh, barely missed outside, and Gibson is furious about that one. Three balls, two strikes. He was really moaning about the second pitch to McCovey. The umpire didn't give it to him. And he threw the 2-2 pitch in the very same spot, and Pryor still wouldn't give it to him. Now it's a 3-2 pitch again. Here it is, on the way, lined in the center of base hit. And now Gibson is really angry. Even more angry is he. As that ball sailed past his head in the center, he was already barking at Paul Pryor. As if to say, well, if you give him that many strikes, sure he's going to get hit sooner or later. <laughs> now here is Orlando Cepeda. Right hand batter. Last time Gibson faced the Giants, he beat them one to nothing in a thriller. A stretch and a hesitation. Here's the pitch. He foul tips. Strike one. Carl Sawatsky behind the plate tonight. Cardinal fans are here from New Albany, Mississippi. Good friend Leslie Brooks runs the station and carries our games down in Jackson, Tennessee. On hand. Here's the pitch, and it's a curve outside. One ball, one strike. The pride of Little Rock next to Sawatsky is Jack Pickens on hand. Our Bush Bavarian distributor down that way. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch on the way. Curve outside. Ball two. Two balls and a strike on Orlando Cepeda. Philippe Alou will be next. The Giants leading the league. 
Cepeda. 16 homers, 55 RBI. Now the stretch. Here's the pitch. There goes the runner. Ground ball to short. No ties, only play first base. In time for the out. McCovey broke on the pitch. Cepeda grounded out. The go tie and threw him out. One hit, no runs. No errors, one left. We go into the bottom half of the first inning. There's no score in the ball game. In you know, other few players in the league who can run the 110 flat. Some who can hit over 300. And some will have an exceptionally strong throwing arm. And then every once in a while, a player comes along who can do all three things. Run, hit, and throw. This is a rare individual. A ball player who stands head and shoulders above the rest. And here's something else that stands head and shoulders above the rest. Bush Bavarian beer. It has a crisp, lively, wide awake flavor that comes through every time. So much so that we say Bush Bavarian drinks good, unusually good. And here's why. It's premium brewed to taste right. Not too heavy, not too light, just right. When you're drinking Bush Bavarian, man, you just know you're drinking one of the world's finest. So stock up soon. You're going to agree, Bush Bavarian drinks good. Group of youngsters in the academy in Caragould, Arkansas, watching the ball game. Here is Kurtzwood to lead it off. Juan Marichal on the hill. He's already beaten the Cardinals twice this year. Once four to three. Stockley built right-hander. Into the windup he goes. And now the pitch on the way to Kurt Flood. Curveball outside. Tom Hollers behind the plate. The kid from Lockport, Illinois, has moved into the number one catching job. Here's the pitch on the way. High ball two. Two balls and no strike. Flood hitting 326. Juan Marichal, who is 1-8. His catcher, Tom Holler, goes out to talk to him. Ray Sadecki will pitch tomorrow against Jack Sanford. Two balls, no strikes. Into the windup, here's the pitch on the way. There's a good fastball over the heart of the plate. Two balls and a strike. Kurt Flood hitting 326. Now Marischal into the wind. The delivery. High ball three. Three balls and a strike. Nobody on and nobody out. Here's Marischal delivering. Ball four, he walked him. That's the way to start. Now Javier steps up with a runner at first and nobody out. Ball game in the first inning. No score. Ron Marischal against Bob Gibson. Last time Gibson pitched, he beat these fellas one to nothing. Another time he was beaten by the Giants. So he's one and one against them. The game that Gibson lost, Billy O'Dell shut the Cardinals out, so he didn't have a chance. It wound up six to nothing. There's the stretch, ready to have the air, the pitch, there goes the runner, a bouncing ball, the second baseman's going to field it, there's a throw to first in time. Hiller had started over to cover second, 
Ordinarily, that might have been a base hit, but with the hit run on, Killer had started to run over that way and ran right into the path of the ball, which wasn't hit very hard. We have a man in scoring position with one out, and here's Bill White hitting 269. Nine homers and 41 runs batted in. Man in scoring position, one away. There's the stretch. And the pitch by Marshall. A smack, line drive right back to the pitcher. Throw to second base, gets away. And flood is safe. A great play by Marshall. Boy, what reflexes to catch that line drive. He led Pagan on the throw. Pagan couldn't hold the ball, or they, had a, they would have had another play. White lines out to Marichal. Here's Musial getting a fine hand. Missouri University football coach Dan Devine with his daughters watching the game here tonight. There's the stretch. A pitch on the way. There's a strike, a good fastball. One strike and over. Musial trying to drive this run home. Two men are gone now. White hit that ball hard, but right back in Marishaw. Left hand batter waiting. Now the glance at second base. Here's the pitch. Popped up on the infield. They gone under the ball. And he takes it to retire the side. Musial popped to Pagan. So each team had one base runner in their first inning and didn't score. It's no hits, no runs, no errors, one left. At the end of one, the Giants nothing, the Cardinals nothing. Folks, remember the loan by phone number to call is Maine 14242. And tonight only, special arrangements have been made with GFC Loan Company. Tonight, everybody who wants to make arrangements for a loan by phone is sure to be taken care of. Because tonight, GFC Loan has all the lines on the main switchboard open, with friendly Bob Adams and all the boys from the 15 St. Louis area offices on deck. So call tonight, Maine 14242. With all those phones in operation, you're sure to be taken care of. Call right now, and $25 to $2,000 is yours. Yes, tonight to accommodate you and you and everybody else who wants money, all the lines on the main switchboard, main 14242, are open with 15 friendly GFC Loan Company men to serve you. All offices open Monday and Friday evenings until 7.30. Also an office in East St. Louis where you can borrow up to $800 with a call to Bridge 1-1770. Philippe Ballou leads it off in the top of the second against Bob Gibson. There's the windup of the pitch. There's a fastball high and inside. This Ballou is having a great season hitting 343. Eight homers and 42 runs batted up. He also is from the Dominican Republic. Here's the pitch and a strike is called. Philippe Alou. Now the pitch. Yes. Goes right on by Sawaski to the screen. Two balls and a strike. Alou now 27 years old. There's a windup. The pitch on the way. He swings misses. That evens it up at two balls, two strikes. Baltimore, New York. No score at the end of six. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. He struck it out. Alou goes down swinging. That's a second strikeout for Gibson. Here's Jimmy Davenport hitting 331. Six homers and 26 runs batted in. Gibson winds and the pitch all the way. Foul tip, strike one. 
One strike and no ball. Gibson's not fooling around with any trick stuff. He's just rearing back and firing. One strike and no ball. Here's the pitch. Low outside fastball evens it up. One man out, nobody on base. The ball game in the second inning. No score. Bob Gibson against Juan Marichal. Tomorrow afternoon, Ray Sadecki against Jack Sandra. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch. There's a smash. Fair ball. Might go for extra bases. There goes Davenport on his way to second. Musial's throw is saved. Sliding. Davenport slashed a double down the third base line. That'll bring up Jose Pagan. Hitting 265. Right handed batter. Tom Haller. The catcher would be next. One man out. Ball game in the second inning. Bob Gibson gets ready. Here's the pitch to Pagan. Gets away. Here's Davenport trying for third to throw. He is. Hey, for third base. Throw was off. Sawatsky threw off balance. And didn't have as much on the throw as he would have liked to have had. And it was high and a little bit to the foul side of the bag. So it's a pass ball as Davenport takes third. Now anything would score the run. The infield has to come in. One ball, no strikes. Bob Gibson needs a strikeout here. There's the pitch on the way. It's low. Two balls, no strike. Tom Haller will be next, hitting 247. We're in the second inning. The Giants threat. Bob Gibson getting ready. Into the wind, and here's the pitch to Pagan. A high pop foul. Here comes White over to the stands. He might have a play. He can't reach it. Two balls in a strike. Bob Gibson. With a runner at third and only one out. Giants have made two hits now. Gibson. Hasn't stepped on the rubbers yet. Looks down for his sign. Here's the windup. Here's the pitch to Pega. Squeeze! And the, wait a minute, foul ball. It hit his body and then rolled in a fair territory. As Davenport came down the line, Pagan tried to squeeze him home, and now we got a count of two balls and two strikes. Maybe we can get that strike out here. The infield is in. Well, the guy like Marischal, even one run, you know, try to keep from giving him. Two balls, two strikes. Gibson winds. Here's the pitch on the way. A uh, looping fly ball, Javier can't, hey, great catch, and Davenport doesn't try to score. Oh, what a play. Listen to the crowd. He outran that ball, Harry. Simply outran that ball. Boy, there's just another indication of the tremendous importance of speed. With the infield in, that ball looked like nobody could reach it, but Javier outran it, caught it over his shoulder with his back to the infield. Davenport, had he tagged up, might have had a chance to score, but he had come up the line thinking the ball was going to be in there for a base hit. So there's two out, and here's Tom Haller. Left-handed batter. Gibson gets set. Into the windup, and here's the pitch. A bouncing ball, we're out of the inning. Javier's got it over to first in time. Nice pitching. And a fine play by Julian Javier. So it's one hit. No runs, no errors, and one left. 
We go to the bottom half of the second inning. Giants nothing, the Cardinals nothing. And before we get back to the ball game, how about lighting up a dual filter Tariton? Yes, Tariton for flavor. Flavor you never thought you'd get from any filter cigarette. Hungry for flavor. Tariton's got it. Flavor you never thought you'd get from any filter cigarette. Quality tobaccos and a dual filter too. Bring the best flavor through to you. Flavor you never thought you'd get. That's the score, friends. Filter smoking never tasted so good. Better check up on your supply of dual filter Tariton's right now. And get another carton before you run out. We'll pause for identification as the Cardinals Baseball Network. This is KMOX AM and FM, St. Louis. This is Kenny Boyer inviting you to see the Frontier Coupe, a full-size Pontiac card top available only at Vincel Pontiac, 3295 South Kings Highway at Filer. This is Harry Carey with Jack Buck. We're going to the bottom half of the second inning, no score. Kenny Boyer up there. Here's the pitch. Curveball in there, a strike call. Boy, this youngster John Tillman has got another home run for the Red Sox. A Georgia Tech boy. Boyer hits a bouncing ball down to the second baseman Hiller. There's the peg in time. Boyer rolls out from Hiller to Cepeda. Here's Carl Sawatsky hitting 3.52. Baltimore, New York, no score in the bottom of the seventh. The Yankees have used two pitchers. Ford must have come up with a bad arm or back. That'll leave the game. Here's Sawatsky. One away. Juan Marichal gets set. End of the windup. Here's the pit. Curveball outside. In some ways, this Marichal reminds you of Carl Erskine, the former pitching star of the Dodgers. I think what reminds me of Erskine is the way he comes directly overhanded with his delivery. Here it is. A bouncing ball to Cepeda. Big hop. He's got it. Easy out. Two men up and two men down. Here's go tie, and boy, this looks like one of those ball games where a run might be a mountain. Go tie hitting 318. No homers in 18 RBI. Marisha. Getting set. End of the windup. Here's the pitch. Curveball on outside. Go ties from Puerto Rico. Marishaw from the Dominican Republic. Cepeda from Puerto Rico. Pagan from Puerto Rico. Davenport from Mississippi Southern College. Line drive base hit for Go Tie. He's on there. Ty rip one in the left field. Here's Doug Clemens now, playing right field, hitting 231. That go tie continues to pound that ball. McCovey is in right, Mays in center, Alou in left. Clemens coming up with two out. Cardinal just got their first hit, a single left by Gotai. Doug 
Clemens digs in. Juan Marichal is ready. Takes a look over his shoulder. Now the toss over to first base, the runner back. Harry, I don't suppose Gotai can beat out Maury Wills for the all-star team, but he's got to be second in line right now. He's sure got to be a big candidate for that rookie of the year, though. Now the stretch. Here's the pitch to Clemens. Pitch out, not going anywhere. No strikes. Go tie a lead. And now Marischal steps back off the rubber. One ball, no strike. Doug Clemens waving that bat around. Marischal's pitch. Outside ball two, Bob Gibson would be next. And he's a good hitting pitcher. pitch. Fouled it back. He had a good cut at a fastball. And that makes it two balls and a strike. Two men are out. Doug Clemens at the plate. Hitting 231. 22-year-old rookie outfielder. The Yankees are batting in the bottom of the seventh. Nothing, nothing with Baltimore. Two balls and a strike. Marischal steps back off the rubber. Two balls and a strike. Go tie a lead. And the pitch. There's a high fly ball to center. That will be an easy out. Willie Mays can't find it. It drops for a hit. Chris Clemens around the third. The run is scored. And he is in there with a triple. Willie Mays lost the ball in the light. towards Philippe Ballou, as if to say, where is it, Philippe? By the time Philippe could yell to him, the ball had dropped. A high routine fly ball goes for a triple. Get a good look at that, because, boy, you don't see that happen often. I want to tell you something, that Gautai was not loafing on a routine fly ball to Centerville. He was really pumping. He couldn't understand why they kept waving him home, but he scored so Julio scored the run. It's a triple for Clemens. And here's Bob Gibson out of the pit. Low outside, ball one. And Clemens wasn't loafing a bit either. He went into third base standing up. I think Otay thought Keen lost his mind when he sent him off and told him to keep running. There's the pitch on the way. Curve high and outside, ball two. Perhaps the greatest center fielder of all time, Willie Mays, just proved he was human. A routine fly ball, and he couldn't locate it. He lost it in the in the gloaming, as it were. There's the pitch. Swings and fouls it off the end of the bat into the giant dugout. And they scatter like ten pins in the bowling alley. Two balls and a strike. Two men are out. Right-hand batter. Here's Marshall's pitch. Try to bunt and he missed. Strike two. Two balls, two strikes. The Red Sox trailing Cleveland six to nothing. Just came up with five in the fourth. And now they trail by only one. Two balls, two strikes. Bob Gibson, the batter. Hitting 211 for the season. A good hitter for a pitcher. Started out in baseball as a switch hitting catcher. Two balls, two struck. There's the pitch on the way. Ooh, he had a good cut and he fouled it back. Two balls, two struck. Willie Mays couldn't find. Doug Clemens, routine fly ball. 
lost it, either in the lights or in the twilight, and it went for a triple. Two balls, two strikes. There's the pitch on the way. He struck him out on a curve. However, the Cardinals pick up a run. Two hits, no errors, one left. At the end of two, the Cardinals won and the Giants nothing. Say, are you hungry for flavor in a cigarette? Well, paraton has got it. Flavor you never thought you'd get from any filter cigarette. Just one pack of dual filter Tarotons will prove to you filter smoking never tasted so good. Go ahead now and see for yourself. Pick up a pack of Tarotons. Dual filter, dual filter Tarotons. Reminder right here, fans, that the 1962 edition of the Dual Filter Tariton Baseball Guide is available. The new Tariton Guide is packed with information on teams, players, records, anything you want to know about baseball. For your copy, send 50 cents with your name and address to Harry Carey, care of the Sporting News, Box 56, St. Louis, Missouri. Send for yours this evening. Send a half a dollar. 50 cents with your name and address to Harry Carey, care of the Sporting News, Box 56, St. Louis, Missouri. Send for your copy of the Dual Filter Tarot and Baseball Guide this evening and have it for the remainder of the season to enjoy. Marischal will lead off. Willie Mays, when he came in from center field, chatted with Marischal, probably telling him how badly he felt about that. He never did see that ball until it hit the ground. Oftentimes, an outfielder will have trouble picking the ball up off the bat, but get a line on it when it starts to fall, but he never did see it until it hit the ground and the Cardinals have a run. Well, here is Juan Marichal to lead off here in the top of the third. The Cardinals lead one to nothing. There's a strike call. ball, one strike. The pitch is a little bit outside. Two balls and a strike. Ball game in the third. The Cardinals lead one to nothing. Here's the pitch. Marischal hits a high pop foul. Clemens chasing it. So's White. The ball drops out of play into the stand. Two balls, two strikes on the pitcher. One Marischal. from the Dominican Republic. Marichal is 24 years old. Here's the 2-2 pitch. He fouled it back into the upper deck. Hey, Souvenirsville. Two balls, two strikes. The leadoff man, Chuck Hiller, will be next. Now the line, and here's the pitch. He struck him out on a curveball. Marischal called out on strike. One gone. Marischal last year won 13. He's already won eight this season. The Giants have played 57 ball games, and they've won 40 of them. That's a 7.02 pace. They can continue at that rate. Nobody will catch him, but everybody expects him to slough off a little bit. One man out. Nobody on base. The ball game in the third. Chuck Killer takes a slider low. One ball, no strikes. Ray Sadecki pitches tomorrow for the Cardinals. Larry Jackson and Ray Washburn Sunday. Here's a strike call over the outside corner. That evens it up. One ball, one strike. One man out. Chuck Hiller up there. Ball game in the third. Here's the time call. You know, the uh, thing that got you on that maze, and probably why he didn't get any help from his teammates until the... 
threw his hands up at the last moment. Here's the pitch. Hi. You know, Willie has a very, very nonchalant way of touching the ball. He will quite often just stand there with his hands at his sides and suddenly cup the hands at the belt buckle for a basket catch. And that's what I thought he was doing out there on Clemens' ball. Here's a pitch drilled up the middle. Base hit for Hiller. Chuck Hiller lined to single to center. with a runner at first and one out. He was out on strikes his first time. There's a leadoff first base by Hiller the pitch. He swings and misses. Strike one. Mays hitting an even 300. 19 homers, 49 RBI. Now the pitch. Low outside. That evens it. One ball, one strike. One gone. Mays straddles the plate. Bob Gibson gets set. And the pitch. High outside ball, two. Two balls and a strike. At the end of seven at Yankee Stadium, there's no score between Baltimore and the Yanks. Mays the batter. One out and one off. Pittsburgh and Milwaukee rained out. There's the pitch. Outside curve, ball three. Three balls, one strike. Right hand batter digging in. Bob Gibson with a one run lead. Into the stretch. A 3 1 pitch. Here it is. And there it goes. Way back. It might be out of here. It could be. It is a home run in the right center. His 20th home run of the year. So Willie gave us one run and then just got two back. Mays hit a 3-1 pitch into the right center field pavilion. And the Giants, just like that, lead two to one. And you almost knew that was going to happen. There's the pitch now. And McCovey takes an inside ball up. Willie Mays, who had given us a run by being unable to locate a routine fly, just drove in two with a homer. Here's a pitch swung on by McCovey and Miss. Man, these guys, these guys really get some cuts. One ball, one strike. Now the delivery. There she goes, way back. Forget about it. Home run. Even broke the bat and hit it on the roof. A line drive. And the Giants lead three to one. And that's McCovey's eighth. And here's Cepeda. Boy. They've got some power. Believe you me. These guys swing. This ball game looks like David and Goliath. Here's Cepeda now. Here's the pitch. Who what a cut and he missed. Strike one. One strike to the ball. One man out, three runs in. The Giants leading. Cepeda. Is at 15 homers himself. Driven in 55 runs. Now the pitch. High inside, and the count evens of the ball in the strike. That ball went all the way back to the screen. May 
Ruiz has driven in 51 runs. Cepeda has driven in 55. Alou has driven in 42. There's a pitch inside. They've got three men in their lineup who have driven in 148 runs between them. Now the pitch. Swung and he missed a high fastball. The entire Cardinal squad, counting everybody, has driven in 244. They're three men alone, 148. That will give you an idea. 2-2 two, two pitch. Outside curve, ball three. Think about them. Even if they don't get good pitching, they can beat you just with power. Now the wind-up 3-2 pitch. Here it is. Foul back. Rebounds to the field. A full count of three and two. Ball game in the third. Orlando Cepeda waits. Bob Gibson gets set. Here's the pitch swung. Popped up on a change of pace. Go tie is out in short left. Makes the catch. He fools Cepeda on a change of pace curveball. And now here's Philippe Alou. On the Western Union ticker, they have Mota hitting a home run for the Giants in the third with one on. Here's Alou, a big bouncing ball. Boy, you're trying to cut it off, Camp. It'll go for a scratch hit. It's ahead, a high hopper towards Sharp. Kenny Boyer tried to cut it off, but couldn't reach it. On Western Union, they have Mota hitting a home run for the Giants. Whoever's sending that report mustn't like Mays or something. Trying to deprive him of a homer. There's a long lead by Alou. Here's the pitch. Davenport takes a curve strike call. One strike and a ball. Tigers won the first game of a doubleheader from Washington, 7-6. to six. Washington used seven pitchers. The Tigers used five in the first game. Here's Alou Ali. There he goes. There's a pitch fouled into the upper deck. Bounces back downstairs. And it's two strikes and a no ball. The Giants. On Willie Mays, 20th home run of the year. Followed by McCovey's eighth. Now lead three to one. Two strikes, no balls. Here's Bob Gibson's pitch on the way. There goes the runner. Here's the peg. He is out trying to steal. Alou is cut down on Kowalski's perfect play. Now out of here. So it is three runs, four hits, no errors, nobody left. We go to the bottom of the third. The Giants three, the Cardinals one. Go ahead, plan that vacation. And for that extra cash you need, $25 to $2,000, get it at GFC Loan Company. Yes, white-collar workers, plant workers, any working man or woman is good for a loan at GFC. So for money for a vacation, to pay off bills or whatever, call friendly Bob Adams tonight at GFC's Loan by Phone Number, Main 14242. Bob's there right now as a special accommodation to you. And remember, tonight, all the lines on the main telephone switchboard are open to assure you double-quick service. So give GFC Loan's friendly Bob Adams a ring right now, Main 14242. Then stop in at your nearby GFC Loan office and pick up the cash. Fifteen in the St. Louis area. All offices open Monday and Friday evenings until 7.30. Also, an office in Belleville, where you can borrow up to $800 with a phone call to Adams 36511, GFC Loan Company. Anaheim 
Kaiser Bush invites you and your friends or club to visit at St. Louis Brewery, the largest brewery in the world. Daily tours are conducted Monday through Saturday between 9.30 a.m. and 3.15 p.m. Please make your tour reservation in advance by calling Prospect 3 3100 Station 729. Prospect 3 3100 Station 729. There's Flood to lead it off in the bottom of the third. Marischal's pitch on the way. He pulled it foul off to the left. Whitey Ford's arm was bothering him, and that's why he left the ball game. That's still a shutout between Baltimore and the Yankees. The Yankees batting in the bottom of the eighth. One strike and a ball. Kurt Flood digs in. There's the pitch. There's a fly ball to center. Willie Mays is there. That'll be an easy out, and he takes it. Flood fly to Mays. There's Javier. He bounced out his first time. We're in the third, three to one Giants. Tomorrow is Ladies' Day, the league leading Giants. With Jack Sanford pitching against Ray Sadek. 130 ball game tomorrow. There's the wind, and now the pitch to Javier. Curveball high and outside. One ball, no strike. Boy, these guys really frighten you up and down their lineup with their power. One ball, no strikes. Javier trying to get something started. Marichal rolling along. The only run he has given, he's, he shouldn't have had. Now the pitch on the way. There's a strike. He came sidearm that time to the right-handed batter. And that evens it up with a ball on a strike. Group of athletes and coaches from West Plains High School here on the hand. Here's a pitch swung on, a bouncing ball to Davenport. The throw to first, Javier is out. He lined out his first time at bat. It cost us a run. The man was in scoring position at the time. And the pitcher, Marichal, made a one-handed stab. Here's the pitch to White. Fastball high and outside. One ball and no strikes. Two men are gone. We're in the third. Three to one in favor of the Giants. Here's the pitch. Outside, ball two. Musia will be next. Two balls, no strike. Two men are out, nobody on base. Ball game in the third. Three to one in favor of the league leading Giant. Juan Marichal, a right hander, delivers. There's a drive way back. It might be. It could be. Just hit his head over the air. And the Cardinals now trail by only one. Oh, the Redbirds showing a little bit of their own power. Bill White reached the Rebellion Roof. Looked like he had a high fastball. Here's Busey. Marshall gets ready. Here's the pitch on the way. Whoa, he was going for it, too, but missed an overhanded curveball. Strike one. One strike, Canobo. Two men are out. One run is in. The Giants lead by one, three to two. Marshall delivers. There she goes, deep in the right center. Mays going over and off the wall. And Willie plays it perfectly in whole stand to a long single. That hit the right center field wall on the line. Bounce right back to me. Here's Boyer now. 
That is about the longest single you'll ever see. Mays didn't even try to catch the ball, knew he had no chance. He just waited for it on the rebound. That's Foster Identification. This is the Cardinal Baseball Network. This is KMOX AM and FM St. Louis. You arrive in the heart of Chicago in a good business mood when you go Wabash Bluebird featuring Dome Liner Service. This is Harry Carey with Jack Buck. Cardinals have a runner at first, one run in, two out, and here's Kenny Boyer. Juan Marichal getting ready. Here's the stretch. Now the pitch. Low outside, ball one, Sawatsky would be nice. One ball, no strike. Well, the Redbird responding to the challenge of the Giants' third inning power with a little of their own. We're only a run behind. Marichal gets set. The pitch. Boy, you missed a curveball of foot. One ball, one strike. We're in the third. Right-hand batter up there. Juan Marichal gets set. Carl Sawatsky would be next. Now the stretch. And the pitch. Missed a curveball, another foot. Two strikes and a ball. Marichal has snapped off two good curveballs. While you're digging in. Marichal is ready. Here's the pitch. Just barely missed with a curveball this time. Two balls, two strikes. We're in the third. Three to two, the Giants lead. Kenny Boyer, the batter. Two balls, two strikes. Musial, the runner at first base. Marichal takes his time. And now the 2-2 delivery. On a long delay. Warrior waits. Marichal is set. And here's the 2-2 pitch. Struck him out again. Warrior goes down swinging. And it is one run, two hits, no errors, one left. At the end of three now, it's the Giants three, the Cardinals two. From Bavaria, the inspiration for a great beer. From Bavaria, the two words that promise you pleasure. The pleasure of Bush Bavarian beer. Drinks good. Drinks good. Saying you get more taste, more heartiness, more satisfaction. Drinks good, Bush Bavarian drinks good. Enjoy it soon. Bush Bavarian drinks good. While we go into the top of the fourth, the Cardinals trail three to two. Jimmy Davenport leading off and at your service, smiling Jack. Davenport doubled his first time, right-handed batter. Gibson throws a pitch high for a ball. Bob Gibson on the mound. Giants have tapped him for six hits. The Redbirds have four. The Cardinals trail three to two as the fourth inning gets underway. Davenport is hitting 331. Takes a strike call, a slider at the knees. It's one and one. Davenport is amongst the leaders. He ranks fifth in the league with a batting average of 331. He's had six home runs. Takes a pitch high, two balls and a strike. It'll be Davenport, Pagan, and Holler. Nobody on or out here in the fourth inning. And Gibson's next one. Foul back on the screen. Two and two. This Davenport is a big part of this giant ball club. 
They have the power, of course, of Mays, McCovey, Cepeda, and Alou. But this Davenport is a very, very fine third baseman. Adds a lot of fire to that infield, and he's a good hitter. Foul back. Had a terrific cut. Two and two. These Giants sure get their swings up there at the plate. They really chopped down on that ball. Gibson with a 2-2 count on Davenport. Fire. Struck him out. He went around, tried to hold up on a curveball, but he got him on strikes. And so Gibson has struck out one in each inning so far. That's his fourth of the ball game. Bob trying to become the first seven-game winner on the Cardinals staff. Kurt Simmons has missed a couple of times as he tried. One man out now, and Pagan steps out as Gibson started to work. Bob works in quite a hurry, as you know, if you've seen him. He gets that ball back, and he's ready to fire right now. Pagan popped out his first time, one of the key plays in this ball game. Javier made a good play on the ball. It's low, the first one, for ball one. Last time Pagan was up there, Davenport was on third base with one man out. Pagan was the key man, the infield in, and he popped one into short right. Looked like it was going to drop for a hit and drive in the run. But Javier caught up to the ball and made a fine play for the putout. That run never did score. There's a foul out of play down in the right field corner, and the count to Jose is one and one. Pagan hitting 265. That's about all the Giants need from him with the bat. Does a good job with the glove at shortstop. Has good range, fine arm. And he can pivot on the double play. Here's the 1-1. And it's downstairs and a bit outside, 2-1. One. one out, nobody on. Fourth inning, Giants 3, Cardinals 2. Had a lot of action in the ballgame so far. The bad weather in St. Louis during the day undoubtedly held the crowd down. Still, we have some 15 or 16,000 here. Pagan hits it foul, rolling back. That evens it up at two and two. Tom Holler, the catcher, will be next. In the third, with one out, Hiller, Chuck Hiller, singled, and Mays homered for the 20th time this year. Then McCovey homered to make it three to one. The Cardinals were ahead at the time. Now it's three to two. Gibson working too rapidly to suit Pagan. He steps out again. Cardinals got a run in the second inning. A single by Gotai and a triple by Clemens and a ball that Mays lost. Pagan strikes out. Curveball got him. Got him looking. Pagan is called out on strikes. Boy, there was a sharp breaking pitch. That ball really danced and Pagan took it. That's the fifth strikeout for Gibson. And after the Giants made it 3-1, to one, the Cardinals saw Bill White homer for the 10th time this year. To make it a 3-2 ball game, that's the way it stands now. Two out, nobody on here in the fourth, and Tom Holler, the catcher, left-handed batter, is up there. And he takes it low. Holler was thrown out by the second baseman, Javier, his first time. It's Boyer, Gotai, Javier, and White on the Cardinal infield. Musial, Flood, and Clemens in the outfield. Sawatsky back at the plate gives the sign. These Giants have been stepping out on Gibson quite often. Here's the pitch. Way over his head and back to the screen. The ball missed everything. It missed Sawatsky's glove, Holler's head, and the umpire's mask. And it's ball two. The Giants have been trying to irritate Gibson by stepping out, not letting him work as rapidly as he wishes. Holler takes a strike at the letters two and one. Bush Bavarian dual filter Tarleton bringing you the ball game tonight. Bases are empty. Two men gone. Fourth inning. And here's the pitch from Gibson. Swung on. Bouncing ball. Out of the air. Big hop. Up. Throws Gibson. That's it. Out of the air. Throws out Holler. And it's a 1-2-3 inning. And you like to see Gibson settle down like that after the slugging in the last inning because... If you get into a power contest with these guys, the odds are against you. At the end of three and a half innings of play, the Giants three, Cardinals two. In a beer, you're looking for taste, heartiness, satisfaction. 
Make your beer Bush Bavarian and enjoy more taste. More heartiness. More satisfaction. Bush Bavarian, a pleasure to drink. Bush Bavarian, drinks good. Drinks good. Bush Bavarian, drinks good. The Bavarian way of saying you get more taste. More heartiness. More satisfaction. Drinks good. Bush Bavarian, drinks good. Fourth comes around. The Cardinals led at one time, one to nothing. The Giants took the lead, three to one. The Redbirds made it three to two. And now, as they hit in the bottom of the fourth inning, that's the way it stands. The Cardinals trail by a run. Carl Sawatsky will lead off. Marischal taking the warm-up tosses. You're invited to Grant's farm by Ann Arisa Bush. This is the original home of General Grant, where you'll find a private zoo, deer, buffalo, wildlife. One of the nation's most famous show places, great for the kids and for the adults. You have to have a reservation, but they're easy to get. Send a card or letter to Grants Farm Tours, Afton 23, Missouri. Tell how many in the group, which day you'd prefer, Tuesday through Saturday, what time would be convenient. Tours at 9, 10, and 11 in the morning, 1, 2, and 3 in the afternoon. No tours on Sunday, Monday, or holidays. We'll put it on your schedule. If you live in St. Louis, or the next time you visit here... A tour through Grant's Farm is an event that you and the family will never forget. So Watsky swings and pops it up into short center field. Willie Mays has a beat on the ball. He waits and he has it. One out. So Watsky flies to center. One man gone. Yes, sir, make your reservations. Visit Grant's Farm. Just write to Grant's Farm Tours, Afton 23, Missouri. One out here in the Cardinal fourth. The Redbirds have been out, hit six to four. They trail four to, to three to two. Three to two the score, and here's Gotai, who singled his first time. Julio singled in the second with two out and came around to score. He was batting 318 at the start of the night, had three hits here last night. Marshall is the pitcher, and there's a line drive foul down into the left field corner. Gotai made a bid for a double at one foul. Marshall has a very exaggerated wind-up. Takes a slow wind-up, and he kicks that front foot, the left foot, way up high. Rears back with that throwing arm and comes at you directly overhand. Real good fastball, curve, change of pace. A tough pitcher. The pitch is downstairs for a ball. It's one and one. Gotai started to go, held up. Julio Gotai. G-O-T-A-Y. Gotai wears number 19, the Cardinals shortstop. Doug Clemens will be next. The Cardinals need a run. We're in the fourth inning. Here's the 1-1 pitch. In the dirt. Los Angeles at Houston a bit later on. Philadelphia leads Cincinnati 2-0 in the third. Taylor hit a home run. Tony Taylor. Pittsburgh and Milwaukee rained out tonight. Cubs and Mets split a doubleheader this afternoon. Gotai hits a bouncing foul on the third baseline. It's two and two. In the first game of that doubleheader at Chicago, the Mets snapped a 17-game losing streak by scoring a run in the ninth, an unearned run, and whipped the Cubs four to three. The Cubs came back and took the second game three to two. They split. Two balls, two strikes the count. Gotai crouched at the plate. Here's the pitch. Strike three call. A slider stayed on the outside corner. Gotai was looking for the curve. Marshall's slider got him on strikes. And for Marshall, that's his second strikeout. He's retired the first two men. Only once in the ballgame, and we're in the fourth inning, did the Cardinals get the leadoff man on. Cepeda, the first baseman, is into the mound talking to Marshall. Mar-
Marshall just a youngster. Last year, his first year with the Giants, and Cepeda sort of took him under his wing. Here's the pitch to Doug Clements. Pop foul out of play, back off to the left. Marshall started only in 1958. He was born in 37. 24 years old. He's from the Dominican. He was married this past spring. 113 lost 10 for the Giants last year. He's 8 and 3 now. The pitch is high to Clemens. And a bit inside, it's 1 and 1. Clemens still looking for his first big league homer. No home runs, 8 runs batted in, and a 231 batting average. Two out, nobody on. The outfield plays Clemens to pull. He got a triple in the third when Mays lost his fly ball. Outside, 2 and 1. Clemens hitting in the number eight spot. Gibson will bat next. Giants three, Cardinals two. Cleveland led Boston at one time, six to nothing. Now Boston leads Cleveland eight to six after five. Two balls and a strike. The pitch to Clemens on the way. Swung on a shot to very, very deep center field. Mays going back on the track in front of the wall. It makes the catch. Clemens hit one about 400 feet into straightaway center field. Willie Mays never did turn his back to the infield. He backpedaled all the way, and while on the gravel in front of the wall, not too far from the 422 mark, he hauled in that blast off the bat of Clemens, and the Cardinals go down in order in the fourth. At the end of four, it's the Giants three, the Cardinals two. If your car payments are so big they hurt, don't let them go on hurting if you're paid down to $1,000 or less, GFC Loan Company can cut those back-breaking payments in half, maybe even lower. That's right. GFC Loan Company can reduce your balance way down. Sound good? Indeed. Then call friendly Bob Adams at the GFC Loan Company right now. As a special accommodation, Bob is keeping all the lines on the main telephone switchboard open through all this ball game. The number is main 14242. Bob will fix you up in a hurry. He'll make arrangements for your loan right on the phone, and the extra money you need will be waiting for you at your nearby GFC Loan Company office. Fifteen in the St. Louis area. Make arrangements in advance by calling GFC's friendly Bob Adams right now. All offices open Monday and Friday evenings till 7.30. Also an office in Granite City where you can borrow up to $800 with a call to Triangle 76666. We've had a lot of action in this one. And it goes into the fifth inning now. Gibson pitching to his hurling opponent, Juan Marshall. Right-handed batter whom he fanned back in the third inning. Gibson has five strikeouts in four frames. Swing and a miss by Marshall. This fellow's pretty good hitter. Has eight hits for the season, batting 258. He's driven in five runs for the Giants. Outfield playing around to the right for him. And he swings and misses again. That's two of them. Here's the final on the Yankee game. They blanked Baltimore one to nothing. Coates got the win in relief of Whitey Ford. And Wilhelm the loser. The pitch to Marshall. Ground ball to second base. Javier, short hop. Almost booted that one. Throws to first and gets it. That ball came to Javier in between hops. Came up to him a little bit. But he fielded it and threw Marshall out. Around to the leadoff man, Chuck Hiller. Hiller lined out to center field to start the ball game, singled in the third, and trotted around the bases when Willie Mays, who was in the on-deck circle at the moment, hit his 20th home run of the year into the right center field pavilion. Hiller takes a strike. He's up there choked up on the bat, little left-handed batter, hitting 281, no homers, 20 RBIs. This fella has solved the second base problem for the Giants. Here's the pitch to him. Low inside. Bounces away from Sawatsky. It's one and one. The Giants tried all sorts of people at second base. Thought they had the problem solved with blasting game. Weren't satisfied there. The name of Bowman played for a while. Now Hiller has it. There's a pop-up. That should be the second out. Sawatsky having trouble. Gibson is there trying to help him out. And Carl makes the catch. Carl is staggering around like... He didn't know where the ball was. Gibson was ready to make the catch himself. 
Finally, Carl picked it up and made the catch. Two out. It was foul as he grabbed it. Hiller fouls out to Sawatsky, and here is Say Hey Willie Mays. Willie struck out and homered. His homer with the man on in the third was his 20th of the year. The outfield very deep straight away. Look out. Pitch is high. Ball one. He was ducking out. He thought that Gibson was going to throw at him. Gibson started off with a curve, and Willie ducked out of there. The pitch was over but high. We're in the fifth. Giants lead three to two. Foul off the end of the bat into the giant dugout. They come off the bench. One and one to Willie. As Harry said earlier, after Willie lost that fly ball that cost the Giants a run, you almost knew that he was going to hurt Bob Gibson, and he did with a two-run homer his last time up there. Now the count is one and one, and Mays takes it outside, two and one. Chicago and Minnesota scoreless after four. Yankees beat Baltimore one to nothing. Later, Kansas City at Los Angeles. Red Sox lead Cleveland eight to six in the sixth. First game of the doubleheader, Detroit 7, Washington 6. Pitch is low to Mays. Mays is really moving around in that batter's box. And the count has run to 3-1. And, and McCovey will be next. Marshall grounded out. Hiller fouled out. 3-1 pitch. Pop foul back out of play. No one can get it. It's 3-2 to Willie. Ball into the upper deck. Bounces back down on the playing field. The Giants leading the Dodgers by a half game. Leading the Cardinals by ten games. The Cardinals are two behind Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh and Milwaukee will be idle tonight. The Cardinals three and a half ahead of Milwaukee. Redbirds only two and a half behind third place Cincinnati. Here's the three two pitch to Willie Mays and a foul back out of play. He's giving ground but getting lumber on that ball. Keeping that bat out there. Cardinals and the Giants have played six times and the Giants have won four of them. Curve ball foul tip strike out. A curveball, and Mays started a swing. Really didn't take the full swing, but the ball hit his bat foul. So Watsky held onto it for the strikeout. That's the sixth strikeout for Gibson. That's the second time in the ball game he has set the Giants down in order. He's retired six in a row. Cardinals come to bat in the home half of the fifth, and the Giants still lead three to two. Well, this is the time for picnics and barbecues. Tell me something, friend. After you've enjoyed the good food and you sit back for a smoke, does that cigarette of yours really come through with taste, or does it leave you hungry for flavor? With dual filter Tariton, there's never a doubt. Tariton's got it. Flavor you never thought you'd get from any filter cigarette. Hungry for flavor. Tariton's got it. Flavor you never thought you'd get from any filter cigarette. Quality tobaccos and the dual filter too. Bring the best flavor through to you. Flavor you never thought you'd get. Dual filter Tariton bringing the ball game to you, along with Bush Bavarian beer, America's most refreshing beer. Bob Gibson is applauded as he walks to the plate. Juan Marshall is on the mound for the Giants. His mates have backed him with three runs on six hits. The Cardinals have manufactured two runs on four hits. And here in the bottom of the fifth inning, with the ball game sailing right along, the Cardinals need a run to get back in. Gibson struck out his first time. Marshall has struck out three. Walk one. Allowed four hits. Strike call. One of the hits, a home run by Bill White. That was in the third inning. Cardinals 
picked up a run in the second that was given to them. But it still counts, and they're only one behind, and here's the pitch to Gibson. Swings, lines one in the left, that ball might drop. Ballou coming fast, can't get it, base hit. Gibson dropped a single in front of Ballou. Ballou was playing quite deep. Of course, everybody knows that Gibson is a good athlete, strong fellow, capable of swinging that bat. That's why Ballou was as deep as he was, and he couldn't get that one. Dropped in front of him, that's the leadoff man, huh? Second time in the ball game, the Cardinals have put that first man up there. Now the leadoff man in the batting order, Kirk Flood, comes up. That's the tying run on first, nobody out. There's a good shot at him here, Jack. This Marichal is tough. In the first three innings, the Cardinals left a man on in each frame. They went down in order in the fourth. Now Gibson starts the crowd to making some noise. The pitch to Flood swings and fouls it. Goes back to the screen. Flood hitting 326. He walked in the first inning. The only base on ball is given up by Marischal. He flied out in the third. Cardinals scored both of their runs after two men were out in the inning. Now there's nobody out. Gibson on first. Pitch to Flood is swung on and trying to go into right field. He fouled it off. Kern had a real good stroke at that ball as he shifted around in the batter's box trying to go into right. Big hole in right center. McCovey is guarding the right field foul line, and Mays is playing flood just a bit to pull. So that's where the big space is in the outfield, right center. But Marshall is way ahead of flood. No balls, two strikes. Giant infield looking for the double play ball. Here's the pitch. Strike, got him. Slider on the outside corner. Flood is called out on strikes. Marshall had plenty on that one. That's his fourth strikeout. Hiller comes in from second base to talk to the giant hurler. Probably talking about who's going to cover second in case the ball is hit back to Marichal. Also wanted to know how he intends to pitch to Javier. That's the hitter. Javier has grounded out twice. Davenport already is a step in front of the bag at third. Javier with a 227 batting average. 0 for 2 in this game. Two home runs, 12 runs batted in for the year. No home runs here in St. Louis. It's a ground ball. That's through into right field. Gibson's going to try to go to third. McCovey can't make a play on him. First and third, one out. Now Gibson was really peddling going around second base. He knew he had an inexperienced outfielder out there in McCovey. Javier bounced one through with Cepeda holding the runner close, and Gibson made up his mind that he was going to go to third, and there he is with one out, Javier on it, first base, and White the batter. Well, Huli succeeded in doing what Kurt Flood had tried to do and failed. That's bounce the ball behind the runner in the right field. And with Gibson's speed, there's no doubt how the situation would develop. It's runners at first and third, only one away, and Bill White is up there. And White hit one on the roof his last time. After lining back to Marischal in the first inning, he homered his 10th home run of the year with two out and nobody on in the third. Now he's up there with one out, runners on at first and third. That's the tying run on at third base here in the fifth inning. And Javier, the lead run on at first. Giants leading 3-2. to two. The infield is halfway in, either for the play at the plate or for the double play by way of second. The first pitch to Bill White. Foul off to the left. Trying to go into left field with that one. He fouled it back. The hits are even up at six apiece now as Gibson had a leadoff single in this inning. And after Flood fanned, Javier got his first hit of the night. So each ball club has six hits. The only difference is in the scoring. Where the Giants lead 3-2, to two, but the Cardinals have these two men on, with White and Musial coming up. Outfield around to the right for Bill. Hitting 269, 10 home runs, 42 RBIs. Chance to make it 45 right here. One strike to count, here's the pitch to him. Line drive in the left center field. That's a base hit, the ball game's tied. Javier's going to third base, and there's no play on him. A single by White ties it up. 
White gets his second hit. He really stroked that ball beautifully over the head of the shortstop. They gone into left center for his second run batted in of the night. Driving in Gibson to tie the ball game 3-3. Three, three. Javier is scooted to third. He's the lead run. White on at first base. And Musial is the batter. You know, we were talking earlier about White not having a success against his former teammates. He must have hurt us. Because he has certainly had it here tonight. He was robbed of a hit his first time on a line drive back to the pitcher. He would have driven in a run with that. Then he homered in the third. And now he just drove in the tying run in the fifth. Yes, sir. The ball game's tied 3-3. Three to three. The Cardinals have out hit. The Giants now 7-6. to six. Still one man out. And Musial up there with Avier on at third. And White... On at first, the giant infield again halfway in. Not a soul down in the giant bullpen. Musial single his last time after popping out his first time at back. Stan with six homers and 24 RBIs. The first pitch to him is on the way from Maris Schall. A bouncing ball back to the mound, and they have Javier trapped between second and third. And he dives back, and he is out at third. Marischal chased him back through to Davenport, and Davenport just did get out of here, diving back in. Musial tapped one back, and the ball almost got by the giant pitcher. He snared the ball, chased out of the air back, through to Davenport, and Davenport just did get out of here, diving back in head first. So it's two on, two out. White down to second, Musial on at first on the fielder's choice, and it puts it up to Boyer. Shaw played that ball in fine fashion. With the one exception, and that was he almost held it too long and allowed Javier to get back to third. Here's Boyer, who's been out twice, grounded out, struck out. Up there, two on, two out, ball game tied, 3-3. Fifth inning, the pitch. Popped up foul, back and out of play. Boyer's been easy for Marshall, and this Marshall has been tough in the clincher. Cardinals had three hits in the inning. They've tied the game. Had a real good opportunity a moment ago. First and third and one out, but Musial hit the ball back to the mound. And it puts the load on the shoulders of Boyer, hitting the number five spot this evening. Two on, two out. Marshall taking his time. Nobody down in the giant bullpen. Dark going all the way with this right-hander. Runners lead away. Here's the pitch to Ken Boyer. A drive to very, very deep center field. Mays going back, way back near the bleacher. That ball's out of here. Boyer wallops a three-run homer with two men out here in the fifth inning. To put the Cardinals out in front, six to three. That ball was really hit about 430 feet. For the count of one strike, he really blasted it. Mays chased it for a while, then stopped and watched it disappear into the bleacher customers out there. For Boyer's eighth home run of the year, three RBIs giving him a total of 40, putting the Cardinals out in front, six to three. Four runs are home here in the fifth inning. Cardinals six, Giants three, Sawatsky the batter. Boyer really came through. And here's Sawatsky. Carl is 0 for 2. Takes a strike. Jack, the big thing about that blow, it not only gives us the lead, but it came after Musial. It seemingly failed, and it picks up the ball club because when one guy doesn't do it, somebody else picks him up. That's when you're really in a good winning way. So what happened that time. Now they're going to occupy the giant bullpen down there in the right field corner. One strike to count to Carl Sawatsky. He has five home runs for the year. Here's the pitch from Marischal. Ball, and it's paused for station identification. This is the Cardinals Baseball Network. This is KMOX AM and FM, St. Louis. See America's greatest caverns, Merrimack Caverns, one hour west of Lindbergh on U.S. 66, Stanton, Missouri. This inning, and here's Gotai, who has a single out of two picks. Jack, that was in the fifth inning last night, too. It looks like... Uh... Inning five is our lucky inning. 
be nice if it could happen every ball game like that. Sawatsky leads off, and Gotai hits a base hit up the middle. Sawatsky's going to stop at second. Gotai gets his second hit, and the Cardinals are really bombing Juan Marichal. He's not fooling him now. That's ten hits. That's three consecutive hits. And that's six hits in the inning. Just meeting that ball, stroking it, and the ball is dropping in there and jumping out of here. Four runs are home. The Cardinals lead 6-3 to three here in the fifth. Have two on and two out, and Doug Clemens is up there. Clemens, after getting a triple on a lost fly ball earlier, sent Mays back to the center field wall for his fly ball in the fourth, and Alvin Dark comes out of the dugout, and we might be seeing Bob Bolin in the ballgame. Alvin Dark comes out to talk to his pitcher, Mara Shaw. One of the new pitchers coming in. Jack, we're talking about the Giants' power a little earlier, and they certainly have it. Mays, McCovey, Cepeda, Alou, Davenport. Well, there's certainly nothing wrong with the power exhibited by our Cardinals. We've had two homers tonight and a triple. Marischal is leaving the field. Bobby Bolin is going to relieve. And I'd like to remind you that there are four air-conditioned Redbird Express lines operating for all Cardinal home games. These direct routes provide fast, cool transportation to and from Bush Stadium. You might try parking your car along a Redbird Express route, riding to the ballpark by bus. Bob Bolin appears for the 11th time this year for the Giants. He has no record. No wins, no losses. He takes over a situation, two on, two out. Sawatsky on at second. Gotai on at first. Gotai has two hits tonight. And the first man that Bolin will face is Doug Clemens, who has a triple out of two trips. A left-handed batter hitting 231, looking for his first big league homer. The outfield deep to the right as Bolin tries to keep the Cardinals from scoring further. Cardinals lead 6-3. to three. First pitch. Outside, ball one to Doug. Doug Clemens playing right field tonight. Batting in the number eight spot. Four runs home in this inning. Cardinals have outslugged the Giants 10 to 6. That's in the hit department. And lead them 6 to 3 in the run department. And a chance to get more right here. And you need all you can get against this ball club. Bolin to the belt. To the plate to Clemens. Outside, that's ball two. The pitcher, Gibson, who started the inning with a base hit, would be next. Bolin pitched on the 1st of June in New York. Gave up one earned run in two-thirds of an inning. Held the Mets while the Giants won that ball game. He's their early relief man, along with Duffalo. Stu Miller, their late-inning relief man. Two on, two out, two balls, no strikes on number 22, Doug Clemens. And here's the pitch to him. Way outside. That's ball three. Three and oh, if Clemens keeps it going, and by the way, he might be swinging right here. He's liable to let him take a cut at it with three and oh, Jack. This kid can reach that pavilion roof, you know. He still has not had his first big league homer, and this would be a terrific spot for it. With the pitcher coming up next, he might be swinging on three and oh. Here's the pitch. Way outside. Ball four, bases loaded. He never came close to the plate on four pitches. And Gibson comes up. He started it. He's up for the second time in the inning. Sawatsky moves on to third. Gotai down to second. Clemens on with the walk. And Gibson, who has struck out and single in the ball game so far, and who now has a 6-3 to three lead, up there with a chance to continue the rally. Outfield playing him straight away and deep. He dropped a single in left field his first time. One like that now would mean a couple of more runs. Bob Bolin, the pitcher. Big, tall right-hander. Works off the full windup and the first pitch to Bob Gibson. Fly ball, left center. Going to be caught. The inning's going to be over. Alou is there, and he has it. And the Cardinals score four. Gibson... Fly to left. Four runs for the Cardinals. Six hits. No errors and three men left. 
the end of five. Cardinals six, Giants three. Well, let's test your baseball IQ with another Tarleton brain teaser now. See what you think about this play situation. There are two out, a man on third. The pitcher steps on the rubber, and just as he's about to start his windup, the runner breaks for home. The pitcher steps off the rubber and throws home to nail the runner. Now, you're the umpire. Is it a balk or isn't it? It's a tough decision to make. Well, there's one decision that's as easy as apple pie to make. The decision is switch to dual filter tariton. Light up a tariton, and you'll taste flavor that you never thought you'd get from any filter cigarette. Remember, if you're hungry for flavor, tariton's got it. Switch to dual filter tariton's and taste what I'm talking about. Now about that call, balk or not, the pitcher did not balk. As long as he has not started his windup, the pitcher may step off the rubber at any time without committing a ball. You know, so far this year, prior to tonight, Bill White against his former teammates had only three hits and 20 times at bat. A batting average of only 150. Tonight, he's had two out of three against. Driven in two runs and should have, could have had another one. Here's McCovey, first pitch inside ball one. We're in the sixth. The Cardinals now lead six to three. The Phillies are murdering the Reds seven to nothing in the fifth. Now the pitch on the way. Swing and he missed. McCovey homered in the third. The Redbirds. Out in front, six to three. Left-hand batter waits the pitch. There's a strike, a slider over the inside corner of the knees, and it's two strikes and a ball. <laughs> two years ago, Bill White against the Giants had only 16 hits in 80 times at bat, a 200 batting average. Although last year he did very much better, hitting 314 against them. But this year he had really been an outman until tonight. He picked a good time to even up. The Phillies are leading the Reds 7 0 in the fifth. The Cubs and the Mets broke even today in one run ball games. Two strikes and a ball. Here's the pitch on the way. He foul tipped, and the count stays. Two strikes, one ball. Willie McCovey singled in the first, homered in the third. Tito Francona just homered for Cleveland to tie it up. Two strikes and a ball. Here's the pitch. Let up pitch outside. <clears throat> two balls, two strikes. McCovey waits. Here's the pitch. He tapped it foul. He jammed him with a fastball that time right in on his fist. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody on, nobody out. We're in the sixth. Cardinals out in front, six to three. Trying for their fourth in a row. Here's the pitch. There she goes, way back. It might be out of here. Flood near the wall has got a chance, and he makes the play. McCovey, fly deep to Flood. On the warning track and dead center at the 422-foot mark. That's one away. Here's Orlando Cepeda, nothing out of two. Right-hand batter. We're in the sixth. Bob Gibson gets set. Here's the pitch on the way. It's a strike over the outside corner. Cepeda didn't like it. One strike and a ball. One man out. It's six to three. The Cardinal. There's a pitch and he missed the curveball. Strike two. Two strikes, no ball. Orlando Cepeda, right-hand batter, hitting 330 for the year. Here's the pitch. He foul tipped and barely got a piece of it. It's one of the few times I've seen Cepeda when he didn't have a good cut. 
is back on his heels as he barely ticked the ball foul. One out, nobody on. Ball game on the sixth. The Cardinals are leading. Six to three. Now the pitch. A bouncing ball foul. Whitey Lachman coaching at third base recovers the ball. Wes Westrom coaching at first. Giant stars of the pass. Two strikes, no ball. Now the pitch on the way. Inside. Larry Jansen is the pitching coach. He, too, used to star for the Giants. Alvin Dark, the manager, was one of their key players. Two strikes in the ball. Orlando Cepeda. Right-hand batter waits. Now the wind, and here it is. Curve, and he bounces it to Sharp. Go tie on the big hop. There's the throw in time. So that's two away. And that'll bring up Philippe Alou. And you know, this Gibson. Cepeda didn't hit the ball out of the infield against him last time he faced him in that one to nothing game. And hasn't hit the ball out of the infield against him tonight. When you hold that guy in seven times at bat without hitting the ball out of the infield, you are some pitcher. And Gibson is. Here's the pitch on the way. And Alou swings and misses. One strike and no ball. Philippe Alou. Gibson's pitch. Let up and drilled in the left field. Here comes Musil. He dies, can't reach the ball on the base hit. Flood recovers it. It's a double. Alou double past Musil, who gave it a great try, but couldn't reach it. The last time that Gibson faced the Giants, beat them one to nothing. Cepeda fan, fouled to the catcher twice, and hit into a double play. And the bases loaded. Here now is Jimmy Davenport. There's a pitch by Gibson. Curve strike call. The beauty. One strike, no ball. Davenport doubled in the second, fanned in the fourth. The Giants have made seven hits. The Cardinals have had ten. Here comes Bill White in to talk to Bob Gibson. Gibson shooting for his seventh victory of the season. Last year he won 13. The score is 6-3. Jimmy Davenport the hitter. White's conversation with Gibson now is ended. One strike and no ball. Right hand batter waits. From the belt. Here's the pitch. It's a fastball a little bit high. That evens it up and a ball and a strike. Cleveland has taken a 9-8 lead in the 7th over the Red Sox. They once led 6 to nothing. Now the stretch, the 1-1 pitch. Here it is to Davenport. Swung and there's a drive. Musial back near the wall. He's got a rule and he makes the catch. Musial went to the left field wall for Davenport's long drive. That ends the inning with one hit. No runs, no errors, and one left. We go to the bottom of the six. It's the Cardinals six. The Giants three. Folks, as I said before, tonight the number to call to make arrangements for a GFC loan company loan is Maine 14242. Tonight, everybody who wants to arrange a loan by phone is sure to be taken care of because tonight, GFC is keeping all the lines on the main switchboard open with friendly Bob Adams and all the boys from all 15 St. Louis area GFC offices on deck to serve you with the cash in a flash. There's umpteen phones in operation, so you're sure to be taken care of tonight. Call now, and $25 to $2,000 is yours. Yes, tonight to accommodate you and you and everybody else who wants money, the main switchboard, main 14242, is open with 15 friendly GFC Loan Company men to serve you. All offices are open Monday and Friday evenings till 7.30. Also an office in East St. Louis, where you can borrow up to $800 with a call to bridge 11770. GFC Loan Company. Well, the crowd held down considerably by the day-long rain. 16,209 paid. The Cardinals are leading 6-3. to three. 
Here's Kurt Flood to lead it off in the bottom of the sixth. Bobby Bolin, a right-hander, taking his warm-up tosses. It's gotten cooler here. A ladies' day game tomorrow. And a doubleheader Sunday. Reserve seats are now on sale. Cardinals are about 59,000 ahead in attendance over a year ago. There's a pitch to throw. Look out. Hit by a pitch ball. Flood is hit by a pitch ball. So there's a good start. That's pretty mercenary, isn't it? <laughs> Kurt isn't hurt, so it's a, an easy base runner. And here's Javier, who set up that fifth inning with a single in the right field. Runner at first. Nobody out. Javier waits. Bobby Bolin, a right-hander. Looks down, gets a sign. Here's the pitch he's going to bunt. It's a strike call, the curveball. One strike and no ball. One strike and no balls. And the pitch to Julia now. He squares around a bun. Now time is called. There's Flood a lead. There's Boland's pitch. He bunts back towards the mound. It's a beauty. The only play, first base, and he's out. Sacrifice by Javier. Beautifully done. The play went from Boland. The Chuck Killer covering the back. Here's Bill White, who's had a great night. He's hit the ball on the nose every time. Two out of three. New Seal will be next. Cardinal fans are here from Rhineland, Missouri, one of my favorite towns. Bill White waits. Here's the stretch by Bolin. And now the pitch. Here it is. A curveball low, ball one. Marischal, Juan Marischal was knocked out. He allowed six runs and ten hits in four and two-thirds innings. One ball, no strikes. Six to three in favor of the Redbird. Bobby Bolin getting ready. Now the stretch, the hesitation. Here's the pitch. He fooled him on a slow curve. Don Larson, a right-hander, formerly with the St. Louis Browns, who pitched a perfect game in a World Series with the Yankees. Now with the Giants, limbering up in the bullpen. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch to White. Another slow curve, bounced down to the second baseman. Pillars got it over to first in time. So it's up to Musial now. Bob Dresty does sports out in Phoenix. Here with his family. Watching the ball game tonight. Phoenix, Arizona. A long way up. I understand they get our broadcast in there at night. Here's Musial with a runner at third, two gone. Stan has got one out of three. Left-hand batter up there. Ball game in the sixth. There's a sign. Boland starts his windup. Now the pitch on the way. It's in there, a let-up pitch for a strike call. There's Bolin throwing a lot of slow stuff. First time we've ever seen him use that technique. One strike to no ball. Two men are out. A wind up in the pitch. He swung and missed the slow curve. Two strikes, no ball. Two men are out. 
six to three in favor of the Cardinals. Left hand batter digging in. Stan Musial. Bobby Bolin. Lanky right handed. Goes into the wind up the pitch. Fastball. Low. And it's two strikes in the ball. The ball popped out of Tom Holler's glove, but nothing happened. Two strikes in a ball. Ball in a set. Now the windup. Here's the pitch. High outside. Another change of pace. Bobby Bolin comes from Hickory Grove, South Carolina. One of my favorite towns. 6'4", weighs 210 pounds. 23 years old. Two balls, two strikes. Musil trying to get this run home. Bolin is ready. Time is called. Stan steps out of the box. Here's the 2-2 pitch on the way. Struck him out on a slow curve. Musial goes down swinging. So it is no runs, no hits, no errors, one left. At the end of six, Cardinals six, Giants three. You know, we all have our favorites. Ball players have favorite ballparks. You have a favorite vacation spot, perhaps, a place you're happy as soon as you see it. Or you have a favorite kind of car. Well, if you like beer, you have a favorite beer. I have. And I'd like it to be your favorite, too. Tell you, if you really like beer, you're going to like Bush Bavarian, or perhaps you already do. Because it drinks good. That's the Bavarian way of saying Bush Bavarian is a pleasure to drink. Gives you more true beer taste, more deep-down heartiness, and more real satisfaction. Not just that first glass, but glass after glass. How about it? Why not make Bush Bavarian your favorite, too? It's America's most refreshing beer, Bush Bavarian. Drinks good. Unusually good. Here at the ballpark, the Cardinals have out-hit the Giants 10-7. to Lead the Giants 6-3 to at the end of 6. And we'll pause for station identification right here. This is the Cardinals Baseball Network. This is KMOX AM and FM St. Louis. How many freight experts on your staff? As many as you need to solve shipping problems, courtesy Wabash. A call to Wabash puts them to work. This is Harry Carey with Jack Buck. Here's the first pitch here to Jose Pagan, and it's high, ball one. We're in the top of the seventh. The Cardinals are leading six to three. Redbirds trying for their fourth in a row. Now the line, here's the pitch. He swings and he misses. Gibson is fan six. Bush Bavarian beer, your host, along with dual filter Tariton cigarettes. Jim Perry, or Gaylord Perry, is warming up in the bullpen. Here's a strike two call to Jose Pagan. Now the wind up. The pitch. A little looping pop fly. Javier is there behind second base. And he makes the catch. Pagan pop to Javier. That's one away. And here's Tom Huller from Lockport, Illinois, former University of Illinois football star. The Cardinals got rid of an old nemesis tonight, Juan Marichal, who had beaten them twice previously. Here's the pitch to Huller. It's a fastball, low and inside, ball one. Philadelphia leads Cincinnati 7-2 at the end of five. Here's the pitch. Inside, the count, ball two. <clears throat> two balls, no strikes on the left-hand hitter. Now the pitch is outside. Ball three. Three balls, no strike. Tom Holler, left-hand batter. Here's the pitch. 
way outside. He walked him. That's the first pass given up by Gibson. Let's see who the pinch hitter is going to be. Mota, maybe. Matty Alou. Matty Alou, the younger brother of Philippe. Matty Alou. Matty for Bowen. 23 years old, an outfielder. Batting here for Bobby Bolin. Matty Alou is hitting 256. No homers and four runs batted in. He was hurt for about three weeks. <clears throat> One man out, a runner at first base. Ball game in the seventh. Here's the pitch. He takes a strike over the inside corner to New York. One strike and no ball. One gone. We're in the seventh. Footballer Don Owens. Here's a pitch lined in the left. A base hit. Matty Alou singles sharply in the left field. And here now is Chuck Killer. And then Willie Mays. You never can have too many runs against these fellas. Lindy McDaniel has started to warm up. With one out, Gibson walked Holler on four straight pitches. Matty Alou lined a single to left. Here's Chuck Hiller now. He's had one out of three left-handed batter. Here's the stretch. Gibson's delivery. A ground ball in the right, a base hit. Here's a man going to score. Up with the ball is Clemens. Fires towards the plate. He is safe. Chuck Killer single sharply in the right field. Haller scored to make it six to four, and here is Willie May. The tying runs on base, the leading run at the plate. Solatsky out talking to Bob Gibson. Might be just trying to stall long enough to give Lindy a chance to get ready. Gibson got the first man out easily, but a harbinger of things to come was a four-pitch walk to Tom Holler, his first walk of the game. Gibson will stay in there to pitch to Willie May. Willie's fanned twice, Homer. Now here comes manager Johnny Keene out. Lindy McDaniels down in the bullpen getting ready. And maybe this is going to be the spot for the chain. The game's on the bases. The lead runs at the plate. Yeah, I believe uh, it will be a new pitcher here. And that's what it is. McDaniel comes in. And Lindy again is in the spot where there's no margin for error, boy. Willie Mays at the plate. The tying runs at first and second and only one away. Gibson, while he was in there, six and a third inning, allowed four runs, nine hits, struck out six, walked one, and he departs with two men on the bases. games. He's won two, he's lost three. He has saved one ball game. Bob Gibson is the pitcher of record as of now. Demeter just homered for the Phillies with a man on. And so they've increased their lead over the Reds to nine to two. Willie Mays now faces a fresh pitcher.
Mundy has been pitching very fine baseball in his last few outs. Turned in a tremendous job against the Reds, you know, Tuesday night. Here is Willie May. Oh, for that double play. Right hand batter waits. Manny Alou is the runner at second base. Chuck Killer at first base. Here's Lindy getting set. Into the stretch he goes. And now the pitch. Here it is. A high pop foul. White might reach it. He's racing for it. Running hard. He's there. He makes the catch. Here is Matty Alou going from second now to third. After the catch. But we got the big man out. And there's two gone. Runners at first and third. And White through to the right base to prevent the tying run. Hiller at first base. Advancing down to second. And more good baseball. Go tie at down on one knee to block that throw from White to make sure it didn't get away. Allow that runner to advance further than third base. There's one big man, but they get bigger all the time, Harry. A big huddle going on around the mound. All of the infielders are hit on it except Bill White. Along with manager Johnny Keane. They're discussing what to do with Willie McCovey. Runners are at first and third. McCovey, a fastball hitter, a low ball hitter, and those are McDaniel's best pitches. Stu Miller has gotten ready now. Looks like he's going to take over in the bottom half of the inning against the Cardinals. McCovey is homered and singled and hit the ball 422 feet. The only time we got him out. Here's a stretch. And Lindy's pitch to the left-handed batter is a strike, a fastball. Just above the belt buckle. One strike and no ball. The outfield squared around towards right and very deep. One strike, no balls. Left hand batter waiting. Lindy McDaniel gets set. The pitch on the way now. And here it is. Foul back. He's way ahead of him. Two strikes, no ball. And Sawatsky goes out to talk to Lindy. Franco Ty is backing up McDaniel down there at short, Harry. Actually, he's on the second base side of the bag. If McCovey lines a single to center, Jack, it'll be an easy out because Gotai is on the second base side of the bat. I wonder if they know where he is. Two strikes, no ball. Now the stretch. Ready. And the pitch. Here it is. High pop foul again and back. Boy, he is. He's challenging him with his fastball. That's right. He's just pumping. He's thrown three fastballs, and Sawatsky's holding the target just a bit to the inside of the plate, Harry, but bell high. Just pumping that ball. Two strikes, no balls. Left hand batter waiting. Tying runs at first and third. Here's the stretch. And now the pitch to McCovey. And here it is. Low and inside, said the umpire. Sawatsky had started to walk off the field. Paul Pryor said no, and Sawatsky's arguing with him now. He aimed for that. Inside corner at the knees and just barely missed. Two strikes and a ball. Runners at first and third. Now the stretch. The hesitation. Here's the pitch. On the way. Bounces in front of the plate. Nice stop in there by Sawatsky. Two balls, two strikes. Six to four, the Cardinals lead. Well, the Giants are threatening. They've scored one. They have runners at first and third. Two out. McCovey the batter. Here's the stretch. The 2-2 pitch. Now, here it is. He struck him out. McCovey missed a high fastball. And there's a great job of relief pitching, boy. He got Mays and McCovey with the tying runs on base. And it's one run, two hits, no errors, and two left. We go to the bottom of the seventh. It's the Cardinals six, the Giants four. 
What's your favorite beer? Everybody knows. What drinks good? Everybody knows Bush Bavarian drinks good. The Bavarian way to say it's a pleasure. The pleasure of more smooth taste, more deep heartiness, more real satisfaction. Bush Bavarian drinks good. Bush Bavarian drinks good. The Bavarian way of saying you get more taste, more heartiness, more satisfaction. Drinks good. Bush Bavarian drinks good. Do, 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 do. How about some tonight? Bush Bavarian drinks good. Drinks good. Bush Bavarian drinks good. Your host, Bush Bavarian Beer, along with dual filter Tariton cigarettes. We're going to the bottom of the seventh pan. Don Larson is the new pitcher. Formerly with the Browns. All brownies never die. Here's Boyer to lead off. Larson, who pitches without a windup. There's a strike call to Slider. Larson, 33 years old now. Stands 6'4, weighs 230. One strike, no balls. Here's a pitch. A ground ball back off his leg, and Boyer's going to be safe. Larson just didn't get down on that. Ball wasn't hit very hard, but it is a hit. Larson wasn't in position to feel the ball. And so there's a runner at first now with nobody out, and here's Carl Sawatsky. Redbirds leading 6-4. to four. Just think, one like that, Harry, would have spoiled that perfect game he pitched in the World Series, huh? <laughs> well, what a performance that was. The rarities of all rarities, a perfect game. And then to have it in a, in a World Series. Here's Sawanski. has had one hit. One out of three. Left-hand batter up there. The stretch. Here's Larson's pitch. Swings and he pops a foul back and out of play. One strike and no ball. Larson was a losing pitcher in a ball game in Chicago Wednesday. Walked four men in. Walked four men and forced in the winning run. Don Landrum drawing the final walk. One strike, no ball. Sawatsky the hitter. Boyer at first base. Now the stretch. Here's the toss over there, the runner back. Don Larson. With the Browns in 53. Then when the Browns are moved to Baltimore, he was with Baltimore in 54. Back to the minors in 55. Here's the stretch. Pitch now to Sawatsky. Strike is called. A fastball up the knee. Larson was traded along with pitcher Mike Bliska and Bob Turley, catcher Daryl Johnson, first baseman Dick Krahoski, shortstop Billy Hunter, and outfielder uh, Ted Del Garcio. And Jim Fridley. Here's a pitch. Swatsky takes it outside. Far, pitcher Harry Bird, Jim McDonald, and Bill Miller. Catchers Hal Smith and Gus Triandas. Second baseman Don Leppard. Third baseman Cal Segrist. Shortstop Willie Miranda. And outfielder Gene Woodland. Triandas, I guess, is all that the 
Orioles have left. Two strikes and a ball. And the pitch to Sawatsky. Foul tip into a strikeout. Sawatsky goes down swinging. One away. And here's Julio Gotai. He's had two out of three. Julio is raising that batting average every day. Right hand hitter. One out, one off. Six to four in favor of the Cardinals. Now the stretch. Ready. And the pitch. A bouncing ball down the third baseline. The only play at first. There's a long peg in time. You got it. Jimmy Davenport on a nice play. Boy, that kid is some third baseman. Well, here's Clemens with a chance to drive in a run now. Runner at second base with two out. That ball was hit slowly down the third baseline, but Davenport, playing shallow, was able to race in, scoop the ball, and fire. The ball had a lot of stuff on it, too, and it came up to Davenport, almost handcuffed him. Had a great arm, though, and he made that play. Holler just went out to talk to Larson, reminding him that the pitcher, Lindy McDaniel, is due to bat next, and first base is open with Clemens, the hitter. Two men are out, a runner in scoring position, Doug Clemens, who's had one out of two. Left-hand batter up there. Now the stretch. And the pitch. It's outside ball one. He's not going to get a good ball to hit. You can almost bet on that. First base is open. One ball, no strikes. Clemens walked in the fifth, flied out in the fourth. Got a fly ball triple when Mays lost the ball in the lights in the second. Now Larson gets ready. And the pitch. And here it is. Fastball outside, ball two. Two balls, no strike. They're going to put him on now. Clemens is going to be intentionally passed. They're going to put Clemens on to get for McDaniel. So it'll be runners at first and second with two out in the bottom of the seventh. Cardinals leading six to four. The Giants have Cepeda, Philippe Alou, and Davenport coming up in the eighth. There's Lindy coming out. Runners at first and second. McDaniel hasn't had a hit this year in seven times. Catcher Holler goes out to talk to pitcher Larson. The ball game in the bottom of the seventh. The Cardinals are leading 6-4. to four. Larson looks down, gets his side. Now the stretch and the pitch. Strike the curveball over the outside corner. One strike and no ball. Two men on and two men out. We're in the seventh. Six to four, the Cardinals lose. Don Larson, 33-year-old veteran, gets set. Now the pit. Pass swing, and he foul tip. Strike two. Two strikes, no ball. Cardinal fans and Bush Bavarian fans. From Flint Hill, Missouri, or on hand tonight. Two strikes, no ball. Lindy McDaniel waiting. Now the pitch. And here it is. Inside fastball. Two strikes and a ball. Bob Gibson started this ball game. Pitched six fine innings. Weakened in the seventh. 
Lindy came on to rescue him. Gibson is a pitcher of record as it stands right now. Two strikes and a ball. The right-hand batter waiting. Now the pitch. And here it is. Struck him out. McDaniel goes down swinging. And it's one hit and no runs, no errors, two left. At the end of seven full innings, the Cardinals six, the Giants four. And this is Harry Carey with Jack Buck as we go into the top of the eighth. Jack, if we can get him on one, two, three here, we might not have to worry about Mays and McCovey again in this ballgame. That's right, but it's a tough order with Cepeda, Philippe Palou, and Davenport coming up against Lindy McDaniel. In addition, these Giants have a good bench with fellows like Keane and Bailey. Long way to go and a tough road to hoe for Lindy McDaniel, who starts the eighth inning. The first pitch to Cepeda, who's 0 for 3, and it's over but low, ball one. Cardinals scored the first run of the ball game in the second. The Giants got three to lead three to one in the third. Cardinals made it three to two in the third. Cardinals went ahead six to three in the fifth. It's now six four Cardinals. Cepeda takes a strike at the knees. It's one and one. Orlando thought it was a bit low. Steps out, picks up some dirt. Lindy McDaniel in relief of Bob Gibson. The Cardinals have out hit the Giants eleven to nine. That's the sort of a ball game we've had here. Base hits to all corners of the field. A couple of home runs for each club. Mays and McCovey for the Giants. White and Boyer for the Cardinals. There's a foul off to the right and out of play. Jack, I wish we could change the rules and bring Gibson back in to pitch to Cepeda. Yeah. He did a job on him. Cepeda grounded out to short, popped out to short, and grounded out to short again. So he and Gotay have been playing pepper all night. Cepeda with 15 home runs and 55 RBI. Willie Mays got his 20th home run here tonight, and Willie McCovey hit his 8th. Bill White hit his 10th, and Boyer hit his 8th. One ball, two strikes. McDaniel trying to get this leadoff man here in the top of the 8th inning, and it's low, 2-2. Two two. The Mets and the Cubs split this afternoon. The Mets won the first game from Chicago, 4-3, to three, snapping a 17-game losing streak, and then the Cubs... Came back to win the second game, 3-2. to two. Pittsburgh and Milwaukee rained out. Here's the 2-2 pitch to Cepeda. Struck him out. He went down swinging on a pitch down around the knees. Most likely that fork ball. And Cepeda is 0-4 for, for the night. McDaniel has fanned the last two men that he has faced. He's retired the only three that he has faced. Philippe Falou comes to the plate. Philippe is 2-3. for three. He struck out in the second. He singled in the third, was out stealing. And then he doubled in the sixth. The Giants have only left five men on the Cardinals' nine. There's a bouncing ball to third. Big hop to Boyer. Good glove. Good throw. Two out. Billy Falou went for the first one and bounced to Boyer. A perfect hop to him. Kenny waited. Got a good grip on the ball, taking his time. Took a couple of steps toward first and gunned him out. Two gone. Only four more outs to get. Cardinals have only won two out of six against San Francisco this year. Here's Davenport, a right-handed batter. He takes a strike, a fastball, and Lindy seems right tonight. Oh, boy, I tell you, this guy's really throwing that ball. He's humming. He did quite a job in the seventh to keep the score 6-4 as it is now. The pitch is in the dirt to Davenport, one and one. Two out here, nobody on. Davenport doubled, struck out, and lined out to left. Good hitter, this fellow, amongst the leaders in the league, 331, and a fine third baseman. A ball and a strike to count. McDaniels into the windup, kicks and fires, bouncing foul. Bounced off of Davenport while he was still in the batter's box. He's in the hole now, one and two. A lot of excitement in the seventh when the Giants scored a run to make it 6-4, and they had the tying runs on at first and third, and only one out, and Mays and McCovey coming up. McDaniel. Came in from the bullpen and got Mays on a foul ball. And he struck out McCovey. One of the highlights of this ball game. Here's the one-two pitch in Davenport. It's a bouncing foul down the third baseline. Whitey Lockman fields it. Whitey is coaching down there at third, a fellow who was with the Cardinals briefly. And Wes Westrom coaching down at first for Alvin Dark. 
One ball, two strikes, and Jim Davenport takes it high, two and two. The other giant coach is Larry Jensen, their pitching coach. Two balls, two strikes to count. Two out, nobody on, eighth inning. Cardinals leading the Giants, 6-4. Davenport the hitter, McDaniel into the windup. Here's the 2-2 pitch, and he struck him out. Called out on strikes. And he set him down one, two, three. And Davenport wants to argue, but can't quite bring himself to do it. A good pitch by Lindy on the outside edge. And Lindy has struck out three of the five men he's retired. Down in order go the Giants. Cardinals come to bat in the bottom of the eighth trying to get more. Bobby Gene Smith is getting ready to go in the ballgame. The Cardinals lead six to four. Bottom of the eighth. Everybody's staying around for this one because it's far from over. Although we're in the bottom of the eighth and the Cardinals lead 6-4. From Larson, the third giant hurler of the night, faces little Kurt Flood. First pitch. Look out, Kurt. It hit him in the back and Flood has been hit by a pitch for the second time tonight. And that's the way to get it started, Kurt. <laughs> we'll do anything for a rally, Kurt Flood and me. <laughs> It's the second time he was plumped, but I'm sure that Larson didn't want to do that. Get that leadoff man on there. Flood hitting 326. He's no, been Jack, on base. A, pardon me, that's the third time this week that he's been hit. He's going to get paid by the Brews next year. I don't mean B-R-E-W-S. Flood on there. Javier up there, and they're looking for the bunt. This is where the sixth inning started, but the Cardinals couldn't score. Haven't scored since the fifth. Javier, pitch out, but nothing doing as Flood scrambles back to first. They had a pitch out on, but Cepeda was coming in. You saw Haller had no one to throw to. Davenport charging in from third. The shortstop be gone, racing over to cover second. Hiller, the second baseman, going over to cover first, and Cepeda charging in. Everybody moving. Outfielders banking, ready, getting ready to back up the throw. Javier has this thing about it. Three trips, a key hit in the fifth inning. Larson stepped off the rubber. Oftentimes, a pitcher will do that to see if the batter will tip his hand. See if he'll move that bat, and the pitcher can learn if the bunt is still on. Flood on at first, nobody out. 6-4 Cardinals, eighth inning. To the belt is Larson. To the plate, Javier misses as he tries to bunt, and it's one and one. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see him swing away here the way they're rushing him, Jack. He hits that ball on the ground pretty much. By the way, Eddie Brasseau homered in the ninth inning for the Red Sox, and they've tied up Cleveland 9-9. Nine and nine. Flood on a first. He might be going with the pitch. They might be putting on a hit and run or a bunt and run because that Davenport is way in from third base. Don Larson, the big right-hander, checks the runner. Javier is going to bunt. He takes it low. Ball two. Two and one. Squared around in bunting position long before Larson threw the ball. Had a good look at it and took it low. Nobody gone here in the eighth. Pittsburgh at Milwaukee rain. Boy, they've had some miserable weather up there this year. It was cold when we were up there last weekend. They're ice fishing in Lake Michigan. Cepeda holding the runner, flood close. Larson taking his time. Larson's done a good deal to slow this game down. Now he has the sign from Holler. Two balls and a strike. A good pitch to run on. Here's the pitch. Strike called. He was going to bunt, but took it two and two. Johnny Keane puts his hands on his hips and looks in at Javier. To say what do you want him to do, hit your bat. Two and two. Bill White will be next. Flood hit by a pitch ball to start the inning. Javier with a two-two count. Here's the pitch. He's going to bunt again. He does down the first baseline. It's a tough one to cover. First base, and he's safe at first. Cepeda charged in. Larson charged over. Hiller was a little bit late covering. He thought somebody else was going to get there. 
And by the time the second baseman covered the bag, Javier had scooted those 90 feet, and he was there with a the base hit bunning on a 2-2 count. And Hooley gambled on that and made it work and winds up with a base hit for size. Who finally fielded the ball here? I think it was Cepeda, huh? Cepeda picked it up. Larson could have fielded it. Then when you looked down and saw Hiller and Javier racing for the bag, you knew that Javier would be in good shape. Actually, Hiller got there before him, but Cepeda had to wait a count before he could throw the ball. And now the batter is white, and he might be bunting. Crowd making a racket. Cardinals lead 6-4. Two on, nobody out. Bill White has a single and a home run out of four trips. He also lined out. Left-handed batter, Larson, the right-hander, pitches, and he hits one up the middle to the shortstop. Pass the shortstop, a base hit, and a run's going to score. Javier goes to third base, makes the turn, but stops there. A base hit by Bill White is third of the night off the leg of Larson, just past the shortstop pig on. For Bill's third run batted in of the night, his flood scored, and Javier raced to third. There's a big run to pick up, and the Cardinals now lead 7-4 and a big chance for more. Still nobody out. A base hit by White is third of the night. That ball just did get past Pagan, and it might well have been a double play ball had he been able to flag it down. He got on through. Flood scored. Javier raced to third. Musial up. Infield halfway in, either for the play at the plate or for the double play by way of second. Stan is one for four on the night. Now the infield comes all the way in. Infield playing in tight. Davenport, Pagan, Hiller, and McCovey. McCovey holding white close. A lot of room through the right side of that infield if Musial can pull it. The outfield deep to the right. Two on and nobody out. Musial takes a strike. A good pitch on the outside corner. Plenty on it. Served up there by Larson. One run home. That was the 13th hit for the Cardinals tonight. The Cardinals now lead 7-4 to four here in the bottom of the eighth. Javier and White, two good base runners are on third and first. They lead away. Larson to Musial. Base hit into left. Another run scores on a single to left by Musial. And it's 8-4. to four. That stands second hit on the Cardinals, 14. Still nobody out. A hit batsman started it. Then Javier singled with a bunt. White singled. Musial singled to drive in Javier. Stan's first run batted into the night. White stopped at second, and here's Boyer. Musial lifted for a pinch runner, Bobby Jean Smith. Boy, this making runs is easy when your big hitters are hitting. Harry, it's still one of the prettiest sights in baseball to see Musial stroke that ball into that op- opposite field. Well, that's when he's really hitting, when he can line that ball the other way. Stan ends with two for five for the ninth. Boyer up there, nobody out, and two on. And he hits a ground ball, double play ball. Hiller has it, gives to second, one out, throw to first, double play. Boyer hits into a double play. Hiller to Pagan to Cepeda. White goes to third. Bobby Jean Smith running for Musial is forced at second. And Boyer double up at first. And that'll put it up to Carl Sawatsky here. Two runs home and the Cardinals lead 8-4. to four, And you still can't get enough against this ball club. Carl Sawatsky comes up. He has one for four. Flood has been on base three times, but has no hits for the night. Javier, two for four. White, three out of five. Musial, two out of five. Boyer, two out of five. Zawatsky, one for four. Gotai, two for four. Clemens, one out of two. And Gibson had a hit. Base hits all over the place here tonight. White on it, third, two out. And the pitch to Zawatsky is a strike. A slider caught the outside corner. Eight four Cardinals. First game of the series coming out tomorrow. Game time is 1:30. Sadecki against Sanford. Then a big doubleheader Sunday at one o'clock. Larson checks the runner at third and now pitches to Sawatsky. A fly ball to very deep center field. Going to be caught by Mays in front of the wall and he has it. Sawatsky flies to center. 
And the rally died in a hurry, but produced two runs. On three hits. No errors. One left. At the end of eight innings, Cardinals eight, Giants four. Well, the stage is set for the ninth inning here, and Lindy McDaniel is in the ballgame, trying to preserve the win for Bob Gibson, who would become the first seven-game winner of the Cardinals. If McDaniel falters, Ed Bauda will be the pitcher. He's getting ready down in the bullpen. McDaniel ready to pitch the top of the ninth. The Cardinals about hit the Giants 14-9 and lead the Giants 8-4 here in the first game of the series. Bobby Jean Smith has replaced Musial in left field. That's the only change. Carl Sawatsky comes out to take the warm-up tosses of McDaniel. For the Giants, it's the last three in the batting order, starting with Pagan. And then the catcher, Holler, and then likely a pinch hitter. And here to tell you what happens in the top of the ninth, tell you if the Cardinals win it, go behind, or are tied, is Harry Carey. Okay, Jack, these are the three men we want to get in a row here so that we don't have to worry about the top of the batting order. The Dodgers have run into trouble in the sixth at Houston. They were leading two to one, but they've changed pitchers. The Phillies are winning easily. Everybody expected that Kofax, because of the poor lights in Houston, to have a picnic down there, but he's had nothing but trouble. That cold ball club really battled you. Here's Pagan. He's had nothing out of three. First pitch by Lindy. A bouncing ball foul off to the left. Strike one. Whitey Lockman goes over. The ball rolls by him, and Red Shandies recovers it. One strike and no ball. Lindy McDaniel. Lindy the saver today. Here's the pitch. A slow tap. Lindy off the mound has it. Fires the first base in time. McDaniel throws out Pagan. That's six men in a row that McDaniel has retired without anybody hitting the ball out of the infield. Three of them he's retired himself on strikes. A fourth he threw out at first base. Here now is Tom Holler. Nothing out of two. Left-hand batter hitting 247. He's had five homers and 12 RBI. The pitch on the way. Strike. A good fastball at the knees. One strike and no ball. One out. Tomorrow afternoon will be Ray Sadecki for the Cardinals and Jack Sanford for the Giants. Now the pitch on the way. A bouncing ball. White's got it. Lindy covers. White takes the play alone on assistant. Holler goes out. White on assistant. And now Ed Bailey from my favorite town, Strawberry Plains, Tennessee, will be the pincher. He's hitting for Don Larson. Larson, a very good hitting pitcher. Bailey... Hitting 238 for the year with eight homers and 22 runs batted in. Two men are out, nobody on base. Nobody's hit the ball out of the infield against Lindy. There's the windup. The pitch is on the way. He didn't mean to swing. The ball hit the bat and went foul. Strike one. The Cardinals shooting for their fourth in a row. There'll be seven out on the lost side if they win this one. Could pick up a full game on both the Giants and the Dodgers and Cincinnati. One strike, no ball. Now the wind and the pitch. It's a little bit low and that evens it up. One ball, one strike. It's eight to four, the Cardinals lead. Now the wind, the 1-1 pitch. He fouled tip, strike two. Two strikes and a ball. Redbirds won last night, 8-2. Leading tonight, 8-4. Won 4-3 the night before that. 10-9 in extra innings the night before that. Two strikes and a ball. Here's the pitch on the way. He almost went around. The fart ball went low, and Bailey, who had started a swing, held up in time. So the Giants are still alive. Two balls, two strikes. 
Two men out and nobody on. McDaniel has retired. Seven men in a row. Bill White, the hitting star. Now the windup, the 2-2 pitch. On inside. And Kenny Boyer, the biggest punch of the ball game, a three-run homer that gave us the lead in the fifth that we've never relinquished. Now it's three and two on Bailey, two out. Left-hand batter waits. Here's the pitch. There's a ground ball. Javier's got it. Here's the throw to White. The Cardinals win. Eight to four. They're fourth in a row. McDaniel retired eight men in a row without allowing anybody to hit the ball out of the infield. That's when he's done a real job in relief. Well, we got timely hitting, especially from Bill White, Kenny Boyer, and Stan Musial. Fine pitching. A good relief job, a great relief job, a perfect relief job from Lindy McDaniel. And that, Jack, in a nutshell, is the story of the Cardinals 8, the Giants 4. Right, combined with everything else, uh, flood on base three times, although he had no hits. He walked once, was hit by a pitch twice. Javier had a couple of hits, including a key hit in the fifth inning when the Redbirds scored four. White, Musio, Boyer hit. Sawatsky had only one tonight, but they didn't need him. Kotai continued to hit two hits tonight. And Bob Gibson contributed a big base hit as he won his ball game. But you have to go to Lindy. And he makes you go to the record book when he was 12-4 in 1960. And this is the way he looked then. Appearing in 65 games with an earned run average of 2.09, striking out 105 and walking 24. That's the way he pitched this evening. And the Giants, as it turned out, didn't, didn't have a prayer against him. You get into a slugfest with these fellas and you've got your hands full, but McDaniel would have none of it. And he really shut the door on him and won the game for Bob Gibson. You know, Kurt Simmons and Bob Gibson had been having a little bit of trouble getting past six. Each had had a couple of tries at it. So now we finally have a pitcher with seven victories, and it's Bob Gibson. Here are the totals. Eight runs, 14 hits, no errors. Gibson, the winner, now seven and four. And for the Giants, four runs, nine hits, no errors. Juan Marichal, the loser, the first time the Cardinals have been able to beat him this year. And he's now eight and four. Time of the ball game, two hours and 48 minutes. They're covering the infield now. We'll be right back at them tomorrow as the Cardinals send Ray Sadecki against Jack Sanford. And it'll be very interesting to see how Sadecki bounces back after his little difficulty. Boy, it'd be great to see the youngster pop up with a shutout. Certainly would, Harry. I'd like to point out that despite the fact there were 12 runs and 23 hits in the game, there were no errors, and we saw a lot of good baseball here tonight. The folks can look forward to more of the same tomorrow and then the big Sunday doubleheader. And reserve seats are still available for both days. Tomorrow, you know, it's a 1.30 Ladies' Day game. We'll be with you with the dugout show at 1.15 baseball time at 1.25.